100 days of posting on Instagram in a row. Yes, it can be done because I did it. But I know it could be done. Of course I did because I've seen other people do it. Especially Brendan Burchard. I talk about him a lot. He says post four times a day on Instagram. And I was like, what? Well, in these 100 days, I went from posting once a day to actually posting twice a day. So just recently I decided to add quote cards to the mix. I'm still searching a little bit how I want them to look best. So am I just limiting to myself to a number of words, including a number of sentences? Or am I literally going to quote several sentences on one card, which of course means different font, different size, a whole bunch of things. In those 100 days, I started doing my Friday Night Lives. That was a big deal to me because I had done weekly lives before and I stopped doing it. The hardest thing about the, the Friday Night Lives for me is I, in the 100 days, I've also been tweaking and changing my sleeping schedule. So before I would be awake during the entire night, it, this has changed to me falling asleep prior to midnight and then waking up early in the morning where when it's still evening somewhere in the US and recording it on the spot right then and there and that's why you can actually see me a lot of times with my glasses on what I learned was that when it came to consistency A lot of times I had to muster up the courage to go live, not because I didn't want to, not because I don't like going live, but when you wake up and it's already late and it's way later than you wanted to, it's kind of hard to find the motivation to do it because it's like, ah, it's long overdue and Maybe I should do it tomorrow. And every time I would ask myself that question, I was like, no, you said I'm going to do it. I'm going to be consistent. So sometimes I would go live a few hours later, but I would still do it. So I'm very proud that I think I've done eight in a row now. But I've done them, you know. Even when it's hard to do, I got to do it. Then I got to add the Monday morning messages. Mm, that's a cool one. Monday morning messages probably will mean that I record ahead of time. I don't know yet. I'm still learning to plan things ahead of time. But that's... Um, yeah, I love the Monday morning messages, so... The most important thing is that I'm getting out there on podcast again. And the second thing is I actually get to post twice a week at least on YouTube. So that's a good one too. In those 100 days, I've seen Autumn. I've seen winter and now it's almost spring. I have seen a lot of gray skies and short days and me wondering what am I doing in this country? And besides being in this country, it was a struggle with the lack of light because it was mostly gray. I've also seen that we can have blue skies again. I saw it twice this week or last week. So that's kind of cool. Temperature is going up a little bit. It can be really cold at night. 
but there is a little bit of sunshine again which means that I can get to sit outside on terraces why am I including this part because we've gone from the shortest day to actually the day is getting longer again so by the time I'm finished doing this or at least by the time I'm finished editing this the hang on sorry <laughs> There's going to be light again, which is, um, yeah, very interesting because when I, I started, it was still dark by the time I was done editing. I talked to a friend uh, today. She said to me, well, one of the things you can talk about is your growth, which is entirely true. So I was thinking about it and I was like, yeah, she's it's correct so i already said that i uh, had been talking about all the changes that i've made i think the most important thing that i learned myself is about the consistency it's about no matter what i do i can do it i'm going to do it no matter what i think that that's a really big one I mean, when I started coaching, it was the first thing I said to my coach. I said, I need more consistency. I can do it, but that consistency. So for years, I've been looking for accountability partners. I... Sometimes I find them, sometimes I don't. They they basically don't last too long. And that's why I came up with the concept of virtual accountability partners. So if you ever hear virtual accountability partners, well, that's me. I came up with that one. It's one of the reasons I've got a tattoo on my hand. That is a reminder of the virtual accountability partner. So the virtual accountability partner is like, hey, you still need to do something. Now, here's the thing. I don't think I need the virtual accountability part anymore because it's been ingrained in my system now. But if we do talk about virtual accountability partners, I do have an image on my phone, which for me resembles like, hey, get moving, get doing something. And then recently, Brandon Burchard, yes, that guy again, he started talking about the future version of ourselves, the, the one who has all the qualities that we want. And I knew about that concept, not just, I think he taught it before, but because Roy Martina actually talked about it extensively. And by looking at what that future version can do, and my future version is a no-nonsense kind of type, so it's like, go do it. Remember the virtual accountability partner and now this one? So they're pretty similar. The difference is that there are no emotions involved when it comes to the future version of mine. It's more like a matter of fact, like you can do it, so, you know, just go do it. And talking to that future version was so interesting. So this weekend, I also got to talk to someone else. Actually, two people lost. One of them lost their best friend. The other one is the partner. So they both lost a very good friend. And having talked to one first and then later to the other one, I had been talking about the effects of visualization. Now, for those who don't know, I have been trained as an energetic therapist. I've been an energetic therapist for years now, a licensed one, by the way, and working with 
Roy Martina, but also with a lot of other people. I've done a lot of things related to the hypnotherapy. I, um, I also did some training elsewhere. And that told me also a lot about visualization and all those things. But what I came to understand is you can actually talk in your mind to the one who's no longer around. And at first people are like, huh, what? And I'm like, well, you know, you can, memories are there to last. And just like we can visualize a positive outcome and our brain doesn't know the difference between whether we've been practicing it or it's the real deal. So that's the way to learn to deal with emotions and very scary situations. You pretend that you're already in that situation and you go to a safe place over and over and over again. So from difficult to safe, difficult to safe. And then at some point the emotions are gone. And I said, well, you know, we can do the same thing. You can just visualize that your friend is there. Just go back to your moment that you were together and maybe you were just sitting or playing games or whatever it is you were doing. And then talk, say what's on your mind. I said, it's going to be a little bit harder when you ask questions. Maybe there are answers, I don't know. And this is not so much about connecting to the energy as if they are in the spirit realm. I'm not going to exclude it, but that's not what I mean. This is about your memories. It's about who you are as a person and you expressing what it is you want to and need to express. So, you, of course, you can also do it on paper. Um, just writing down sentences, scribble a little bit, writing down words. It's all up to you. But it's about expressing yourself. I guess that's the most important thing of it all. It's about expressing yourself. That helps. I know it helps. It helps. It helped the other people too. Now, one other thing that I talked to uh, this friend about, we see one another on a weekly basis, so that's kind of cool. And today she took me out to have pancakes. So the people who know me know I love pancakes. They are also related to very fond memories of me being at the beach at a pancake restaurant. It's gone now. Uh, the pancake restaurant has moved to a new city with uh, no beach. <laughs> and I think there is a pancake restaurant nowadays near the beach, but you know, the beach, the, the whole ambience has changed so much. It's no longer fun to really go there. So yeah, I do go there in the summer, but it, it's just not the same. I can say, yeah, but this is about you not liking change. But in the years that I'm here now, I figured out that whenever they do a lot of renovation to improve certain things, during the time that the renovation is there, people just go away and they don't return back. I think one of the exceptions is actually uh, what we call the Mall of the Netherlands. It's big, it's really big, and a lot of people go there. And I didn't expect that one. It had this more like an old vibe village, uh, old Philip vi village vibe, <laughs> but now it's, it's really modern. And there's a lot of there, and it's got a bit of an uh, American vibe to it. Lots of places where you can sit, where you can charge it's it's got so many things it, it's actually kind of cool i've seen people starting using substance abuse or using substances leading to substance abuse 
and not knowing how to get rid of it because of their own self-worth, because they started believing that it was them. And I want those to reach those people too. So I've been thinking about swag, so merchandise, clothing, those kind of things, with lines which are specific for me. One step at a time. That's something I say a lot. You're worth it. That's something I say a lot as well. And you can do it. I'm going to add something to that, which is the road to freedom. And I've talked about road buddies a lot. Uh, one of my friends, we used to go everywhere. So we were road buddies. And so when I started out at first, it was Lady Lexi's Life on the Road. So people thought I was a travel blogger. But it is about how can I get my freedom in order to be able to travel. That's what it's about. It's been about my struggles being able to travel. And well, fortunately, I can stand on two feet again. So it's become easier, but like you've heard before, I still not can walk long distances. So being in an airport, that's a problem. <laughs> and sometimes being in villages, especially old ones, that's a problem too. So I have to learn to reinvent myself and use tools and ask for help, ask for support. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, but I want to incorporate all those elements of one step at a time, about speaking up, speaking out, and about mindset. I'm worth it. You're worth it. In one PDF, which people can look at every day, and they can ask themselves questions. It's about having their mindset change from negative to positive. And it's about setting intention. So I actually do have a lot of PDFs people can use, but I want that one specific PDF. That's typically me. So I sort of know, like I already said, what it's going to look like, but now I want to create it. And I want to focus on that one thing and get it out there specifically. And one of the reasons is I do lots of challenges. I like doing challenges. I create these opt-in pages for the challenges. I've started using a different system. So I've created different funnels, but it's never the way I want it to be. I'm still learning how to fine tune it. So it becomes the one thing that I want. So I decided I'm going to focus on that one thing. <laughs> so I want people to opt in to that one page. So I can create that one funnel with everything following from it. That's a new thing for me. And that's the result of posting 100 days in a row. It's um, like my friend said, a lot of things have changed within those 100 days. And a huge part is the results of all the training that I've been given in this last year. And really thinking about it like, okay, but how am I going to apply this? It's not like I didn't have the training before because I did. It's just that my mindset has changed into like, okay, I want to leave a legacy. I want to create a ripple effect, but how? And that means getting out there consistently so people can find me. And I guess when we talk about the 100 days, that's what I've been doing, working on that one thing consistently. I just didn't know that it was that one thing. So that one thing is also something that I came up with and uh, so a lot of people are like, what's that one thing? Well, that one thing is that one thing that gets your heart to beat faster. That's why I call it that one thing. It's that one thing that you've been dreaming about. It's that one thing that you want to focus on over and over and over again. So yes, 
100 days in a row. I've told you about the things that have changed for me. I've told you about my story. I've told you about my things that I do specifically. I've told you about that one thing. I've told you about one step at a time, setting intention. What I didn't talk about was what I call, well, actually what Evan Carmichael calls the pillow test. So at the end of the day, you figure out like, have I done it all? Oh no, okay, let's do that one thing quickly. That's basically how I found my new rhythm. I allowed myself to sleep because I'm too tired. But when I wake up, I still get that one thing done. That one thing that I set out to do during the day. And for me, that's actually making sure that my post for Instagram gets out there too. So here I am. Now, I also know that this post is going to be limited to 15 minutes. So you probably have to go to YouTube in order to see the full version. That's the way it is. Maybe I'll chop it up in part one, two and three for uh, the 100 days. Could be an answer to. All in all, I want to show people that it's possible. It's possible to change. It's possible to be consistent. It's possible to get out there with the right motivation. A lot of people are afraid. They don't like seeing themselves on video. I was no exception to that one either. They're like, what do I have to share with the world? Well, fortunately for me, having had to struggle being listened to, especially by the medical community, I learned how to speak up and speak out. And I also learned that if I do it long enough, solutions are there. I also learned that the support of friends really helps you get there. So I know that, well, people actually said it, you're a role model to me. So that's good. I've now also come back to the concept of, okay, virtual accountability partner. Let's use myself, my future self for, as the role model. So what's my future self good at? Okay, no, well, let's adopt that one. Let's work on it <laughs> because I know I can do it. And my wish for you is that you learn to trust yourself too, that you understand that you don't need to turn that switch indefinitely or do so by inflicting yourself pain, by numbing yourself, but instead that there are other methods you can use to you know, give yourself that break from the chatterbox. And if I can teach people that they are worth it to be speaking up and speaking out, that it's, that they're good enough the way they are. So think inclusion. And more importantly, that they see why it's worth living again because well they're no longer on their own that's going to be amazing a lot of people are lonely i know they are especially in this time you know the the information age the it age the technology, the information technology age has brought us a lot of things. It has brought us closer to a lot of people. You normally would be in different countries and hence unreachable. But a lot of things have changed as well. Google it, find it on YouTube. And a lot of things have to be done more efficiently and in a smarter way. So fortunately, we have AI. I'm still learning how to use it to my advantage. 
And yes, a lot of people can use it, but there's loneliness lurking around the corner. And especially having experienced COVID, we know what loneliness looks like. And I want people to know that they're not alone and that they can actually share their story and they can find other people if they are, are willing to find support. And of course, having a low self-esteem self -esteem is linked here, but people don't want to talk to me. So getting people to start believing in themselves again, working on that one thing that they need in order to be able to go out there again, that's something that's, that's so very close to my heart. And like Trent Shelton recently said, when you want to leave a legacy, it's not about the amount of followers. It's not about the money you make. It's something that comes from the heart. And it's something you keep on doing over and over and over again. You just don't stop. If you want coaching, I'm there for you. I do group coaching, training every Tuesday. I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching with people. And there's a lot of stuff out there. On YouTube, just look for Lady Lexi Speaks Up and on my Instagram. So go find it and listen to the things. The Friday Night Lives, the one hour shows. They are there for you to realize, hey, I'm worth it. I can do it. I'm good enough the way I am. The Monday morning messages, I've just had one up till now because I started last Monday. Tomorrow is going to be a new one. And that's to set the intention to actually start working on that one thing and try new and different things related to that one thing. And, you know, I've been saying for years now, if I can do it, you can do it too, because I traveled the world during six weeks on two crutches and two backpacks. Now, let me change that a little bit. I traveled the US, several states during those six weeks. But during that year, yeah, I traveled the world because I also traveled a lot in Europe as well. And I literally had to learn how to do it, whether going by plane, being stuck at an airport because I couldn't use suitcases, whether going by train, um, which is actually a very uncomfortable way of transportation when it comes to stopping and starting because that's when I'm prone to injury. When, when it's, whether it's going by car, which is usually the best thing for me because then I can park close by where I need to be instead of having to walk. Asking for support. Oh my God, I need support 24 seven whether, well, not 24 seven, but a lot of stuff. When I eat at a restaurant, I always have to ask if they can change things, change and tweak. When I travel, especially when I go by plane, having to cross long distances, I usually do so in a wheelchair. Yeah, I'm getting pushed. <laughs> or I'm on this cart, this shuttle. It's, it's actually kind of cool. I get to see things that other people do not get to see. And yes, I also got to appreciate that. I've got a huge appreciation for the possibilities that I've been handed because of that same injury and ligament disorder. So the question of course is, what have you been dealt with and what has it given you besides pain and heartache? There's probably also some good things that have strengthened you. So 100 days, here we go. Let me know what you got out of it. One of the things that I also did was I made a lot of handouts during those 100 days. I started working on my framework. So this was something that I wanted to do for about a year, it was one of the reasons I became a CHPC and Certified High Performance Coach. 
according to the guidelines of yes again Brendan Burchard he's the master of self-development about of marketing consistency pushing himself to to go on and also research he's really good at research and he started out under a pile of notes as in bills he had to pay not notes as in uh, money but actually bills and at some point he decided i need to change this and he did and he's been going on every day for over a decade that's when we talk about being a role model well he talked about frameworks and i was like i want to do that too so i became chpc because i wanted to know about frameworks didn't get the answer by the way and then in september i went to the coaching summit in austin where he gave training and not just he but a lot of other people too is that true well yeah i think he always brings guests and well he taught framework cool then at some point he said whenever you go record something you can actually create a framework and i was like oh yeah that's true i can actually do that so when i was over at the friend today and talking to another one earlier while driving to um, the dinner party at the pancake restaurant we um i got to discuss with some people like you know Brendan has this one thing, he has a one-page productivity sheet and he focuses on that one thing over and over again. So one of the things that I talk about a lot is what's your one thing? What's that one thing that you want to get good at? So a lot of people, including Evan Carmichael, our YouTube expert, they say focus on that one thing, get good at it don't change it well you need to change and tweak but don't change what you're doing as in doing something completely different so yes you keep on focusing on that one thing you can uh, approach it from different angles angles and all that stuff it's just you don't let go of that one thing so you can change everything you do about that one thing but you still keep doing that one thing until you've tried everything and you've seeing what works and what doesn't work and only and if only if you've literally done it all then maybe go to the next thing but it's about the tweaking and changing now why did i say so because i was like i want to get that one thing out there as in the one pd one page pdf now my story has to do with speaking up speaking out and literally sharing my story what i've come to learn is that people come to me not just because i learn or I teach them how to speak up and for the local ones i actually do the speaking up for them so I talk about it with them about, okay, what is it you, you want and need? What's going right? What's not going right? Okay, let's fix that. And they see me as the role model and they learn how they can actually speak up themselves. I also learned during the time that people who don't see any perspective anymore for some reason end up on my doorstep can be referral could be other reasons and and one day i asked one of my clients why do people come to me when they don't see any perspective anymore so we're sort of talking about opting out 
And he said, well, you're not afraid. And people know it. They sniff it out. You're not afraid. And that's true. And I don't know what exactly it is, but I've had my fair share in life of being bullied, of wanting to opt out, especially as a teenager. And not being heard, seen and understood, having to fight over and over and over again to regain my freedom again. I'm still fighting. It's just not so much that I'm fighting against doctors. It's more that I need to learn how to deal with my own body. Um, because, well, I've got ligament disorder and well, that, you know, every now and then <laughs> something uh, doesn't align anymore. So I go to the therapist two times a week, sometimes three times a week. And they help me to realign everything. And apart from that, it's pushing myself. I have a bike and I don't have an e-bike, but I have an actual bike. I've been looking for this one for a while. It's got enough gears to actually be able to go quicker and to vary how much effort I need to use in order to go ahead. It's better for my joints when I want to use it compared to the other ones. And well, it's actually a kind of cool bike, but in the end I need to do it all myself. And the reason I do so is because I'm afraid that if I go use the e-bike, that I'm going to use the sport all the time. I know me, that's the whole thing. I also do a lot of walking. I'm learning nowadays that whenever I go on, not so much wobbly ground, but when I go and I walk on, on hills, so non-flat surfaces, that's actually what triggers pain. It triggers tears. It triggers my legs saying, mm, we don't want that specifically on one side. It's, it's... So I know that by now. So I can walk for hours, but that means that I also stand in between for hours and sit. So how far do I get in those few hours? Well, not far, <laughs> under a mile to give you an idea. But it's getting out there, it's getting fresh air and usually I do so in order to catch Pokemons. So I started catching Pokemons this summer since July. Uh, actually, it was the result of Pokemon sleep Someone pointed that out to me and I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then I went for Pokemon Go and then I realized I needed a Pokemon Go Plus. So that's a device that does the catching for you and does the spinning. And not having been able for years, for decades now to just hold on to something, I've learned to have certain things done for me. And Pokemon Go Plus does a lot of things for me. It's for my, when it comes to my joints, it's way better. So right now when I'm recording this, I'm installed such a way that my elbows actually support it in order to record this. So I, I know by now what I need to do to work with what I've been given this body. So my story is about speaking up, speaking out, but also about it's not okay to be abused. It's not okay when you're doubting yourself. It's not okay to want to opt out. Well, it's okay if someone wants it, 
but it's not okay for the environment. And it's not okay to do so if you haven't tried it all. And it's especially not okay that you do it because you feel you're not heard, seen and understood. So I know about people who opted out. I try to prevent everything I can to people not have opting out. Unless they have very good reason. Like there's always doubt. Always, always. And they cannot get rid of it and they get very depressed. And even then it's very hard because when I see potential in the people and I know that if they trust themselves, it can be changed. But you know, I cannot control what other people do. But when people have nerve pain and all those kind of things, yeah, then I get it. I get it. That's one of the worst things in life. But the most important thing is that a lot of people just want to turn off that switch in their mind. And that one, I understand. I have been wanting to turn that switch decades ago. And at some point I got this medication for ADHD. And then I realized, hey, when I take the medication, my brain literally shuts off, the chatterbox stops. And then I would wake up dreamless, <laughs> everything. And I was like, oh, this is possible too. Very enlightening. And I realized that was the one thing that I was looking for. You know, just switching the chatterbox off. Of course, since then, I also learned to meditate, to do breath work, focus on the breathing, focusing on counting, focusing on doing something physical so the emotions have to stop. So I don't literally feel like I need to switch off anymore because it's so ingrained in my system that I can do it. The good thing is I don't have to do anything definite. I don't have to, to harm myself. A lot of people, they self, uh, we call it automutilation. So they self harm themselves in order to make the physical pain stop the mental pain. Well, that's something I can do um, using my thoughts, like I said, meditation, visualization. So that's good. And I teach people to do the same thing or I actually create a meditation where we go someplace where they don't have to feel at that moment. So when I was talking to my friends today, I was like, I want to create that one page that I can give out over and over again. That's not only there for the people to learn to speak up, but actually is there for the people who think negatively about themselves, who think they're not worth it who want to opt out, who have dealt with mental abuse and or physical abuse, narcissists and anxiety and have been led to believe that it's them over and over again, who have gone from being people who used to be outgoing, working, talking to others, to people who were only at their own place because their partner didn't like it when they would go out. If you want to see more videos related to influence, then go there. Click that. Yes, right there.